Welcome to the Bloodhound Interface Tutorial, the first in series of the Understanding Bloodhound Tutorial Series. This tutorial will assume that you've seen the Quick Start video and thus will build concepts based off your knowledge from the Quick Start video. So if you haven't already, go check out the Quick Start video before viewing this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to go over real time versus setup mode, adding multiple time frames, and configuring confidence thresholds. Okay, so on my screen you see a chart from NinjaTrader. To instantiate Bloodhound, go to Indicators, scroll down until you see SI Bloodhound, double click it, and on the top right you see an unnamed template. This is the template that Bloodhound uses to do its calculations. And to instantiate the template interface screen, single click the ellipsis button and it brings up the main Bloodhound interface. This is what we call the Bloodhound setup mode. This is in contrast to may, what you may have seen already, which is bringing up the Bloodhound interface while the ch chart is actually running. So as you can see right now, that the chart is not accessible because we are in setup mode and it is not running in the background. Furthermore, any other indicators that we add to this screen, so again, this is the NinjaTrader indicator setup panel and any indicator that we select here actually won't be added to the chart until we hit apply. So in direct contrast to having the chart running and having the indicators already on it, this is again what we call Bloodhound's setup mode, is when you bring up the Bloodhound template dialog using this screen. So you may see some distinctions in our documentation between setup mode and real-time mode. This is setup mode. And the reason why this is important is because certain things can only be done in setup mode, namely adding multiple time frames. So you'll notice that this chart button is now here. And we can click multiple time frames by just simply clicking this button. And we can go in and say we want to look at a five minute chart. I've just selected the, the top one there on the left hand side. I can change that to five. You notice that changes to five. And likewise, if we want a 30 minute chart, we can just simply select that and change that like so. Also notice on this screen here, we have this drop down. On this drop down is where all the solvers exist in Bloodhound. And we'll be going through in this tutorial series each and every single one of them. But just be aware, this is where they are. And to simply add one, select it, hit the add button. Notice how when I hit the add button, it fell underneath the default time frame. That was because I had the default time frame selected. If I wanted to put a solver underneath the five minute time frame in this example, I would select the five minute time frame, select my solver, add it there. I can also move these solvers up and down between time frames by using the up and down button, like so. Also note that each solver has a name associated with it. So on the right hand side are the properties of this solver. And again, we'll be going into great detail on each and every individual one. But for now, let's take a look at the common settings that each one has, including the name. So if you change the name, it will update on the left hand side. So this is quite useful if you have specific criteria. Now remember, solvers correspond to specific criteria. It's a good idea to name these solvers so they're meaningful to you. So it name them generally after what kind of criteria that you're, you're looking to solve. Here we have a description field where you can set anything you'd like here to describe your solver in detail. Also notice that we have a, a color of plot option here that every solver has that we can actually change so that Bloodhound will individually plot this solver's value to the output window using that color. This is useful if you want to see the value of one solver without the influence of others. At the top here, you also notice there's a name field. This is not to be confused with the name field with individual solvers themselves down here. But this is the name of your document file. So presumably you'd put the name of your system here. So for example, if I had an exam if I just wanted to call this example system, I would call it example system like so and then you have a description field. Now you've probably heard us hammer this in many times before, but before you start any sort of system and before you implement anything in Bloodhound, 
we recommend very strongly the first thing you do is actually write your system description down. Now you can put this in a notepad, you can put it on a piece of paper, it doesn't matter, but you can also put it right here. Finally, you can save. By default, Bloodhound will actually save your template files in your Ninja Trader templates directory. This is where your template files are all stored. Alright, so I'm just going to dismiss the dialog and as you can see now, Bloodhound is now on the chart. Now take note at the very top of the chart you see an example system button and you see a drop down. These are Bloodhound's buttons and if I click example system, which is the name of the system I, I created earlier, the same Bloodhound template appears. Except, notice that there's no longer a chart button here. And also notice you cannot load. So this is what we call real-time mode. This is, again, in contrast to setup mode, where this, the indicator hasn't been added to the chart yet. In real-time mode, however, the indicator is part of the chart, as you can see on the bottom left here. And any changes that we do make get instantly updated on the chart. And likewise, you will not be able to add new timeframes in this mode. But don't fret, if you need to add new timeframes, simply go back to setup mode by dismissing this dialog, right clicking, going back to indicators, selecting your Bloodhound indicator, and then selecting the template on top right. By clicking this, you'll notice that all your settings are still there, but the difference is that now you have a chart button and now you have the ability to load. Okay, so I'm just going to go in here and, and go back into the Bloodhound template. And if you may recall from the quick start video that there were two stages involved with Bloodhound calculations. The first being the solver stage, which is what we were working with earlier and that's what this solver tab represents. The second stage is the logic stage. And then you can get to that just by clicking this logic tab like so. Right now it's empty, so you won't actually see anything, but if you hit the new button, this result node pop up. And if you recall, the result node is where your final output goes. So over here we have the list of solvers that we added in the solvers menu. That's on the left hand side. So we had one that's named solver1, but the other one we did not name. So it's just the default name indicator comparison. And right beside it is the logic nodes. You use the logic nodes in conjunction with the solver nodes together to create your output. So for example, if I were to select solver nodes, hit solver. My, the first one that I selected appears and then I can select the other one and then I can choose an AND node and put them together like so. On the right hand side is what we call the sidebar and it's a context sensitive bar so basically if you touch or select a, a particular node it will update so here we've got the solver settings below. Above we actually have the properties of the logic node. If I select the AND node like so, I will see the properties of this particular AND node as well as the properties of the nodes that are connected to it. Every single one of these logic nodes has some additional settings. For example, I can add what we call a fuzzy logic hedge to them. Don't worry about exactly what they mean for now, but just be aware that you can actually enhance the value that comes out of the solver. You can change the plot color. You can actually change the name as well. You can multiply the output value by a certain number. And finally, you can constrain the output value to a certain range. Now these are all advanced features. And just be aware that each one of these logic nodes has additional settings to it. You can delete nodes by hitting the X button by when you mouse over a particular node. And you can delete connectors by simply putting your mouse over them and clicking the delete button as well. Lastly, you may actually notice that this is a drop down. So you can actually create 
multiple logic templates. So I've just clicked it twice and now you can see that there are in fact three logic templates defined in this Bloodhound template. And I can switch between them like so. So as you may recall from the quick start video, we mentioned that you can actually have multiple logic templates defined, maybe to use in different trading conditions. So say you had one system that worked pretty good and had the same criteria as uh, you maybe had a so maybe you had one flavor of a system that worked pretty good in a trending market and and then another configuration that worked better in a sideways market. You could create two different templates like so and then simply swap between them like we're doing here. Of course you can duplicate them and you can also delete them. And now that brings us back to this drop down that we see at the top of the chart here. As you recall we created three logic templates and now that you can see them selectable from the drop down on the top of the chart. So this allows you to cycle between them very quickly after you've defined them. Now we don't have any settings for the other two so they're empty but as you can see as I select them the screen changes and updates automatically. So I'd now like to illustrate how Bloodhound calculates its signals and puts them onto the chart. As you can see we have these tall bars here and they correspond to a green stripe and then these tall red bars which correspond to a red stripe. And these values are basically look compared against this threshold number which is found by clicking the, the blue expand button beneath the logic template which will give you some additional settings and amongst them is this confidence threshold value and right now they're set to 0.8 which basically means that if this bar is greater than 0.8 then that's considered a signal and similarly if this red bar is greater than 0.8 it's considered a signal in the short direction and that's why we get these paints. Now if we were to take this bar for example which is only 0.7 it's below the 0.8 threshold and that's why it's not painting a green stripe but if we were to lower this value, like so, now you can see that it's been painted. You'll also notice that if I were to lower this to 0.5, that even though some of these values, so for example, this short value here is actually 0.53 or 0.54, I should say, it should actually paint a value you'd expect in the short direction but the reason why it's not in this case is because we have this compare ratio feature which basically says that you only get a signal in a particular direction if it's at least 1.5 times greater than the other direction so in this case here we have a bar that is greater than 0.5 on the short side but it is not 1.5 times greater than the long side which is 0.43 in this case. So if I click this off it takes that check away and now you can see it properly paints the short side red. So you can toy around with these values to suit your system's needs. Just be aware that setting the threshold will change how sensitive your system is to a signal. I'm now going to dismiss this dialog and I want to show you that these values are also in the indicator setup panel. So if I were to select SI Bloodhound here and scroll up a little bit, you can see that we have a long and short threshold number in the second section. And this is actually overridden by the template that we saw earlier. In other words, these values are only used when there's no template defined. So that, folks, concludes our very first tutorial. In it, you learn the difference between setup mode and real-time mode. You learn how to add multiple time frames. And finally, you learn how to manipulate confidence threshold values. So thank you very much for viewing. And for more information, visit our website at www.sharkindicators.com. Thank you very much.